Tony, any uh, card magician who spent a lot of times with a deck of cards will tell you that you start to develop an affinity for the cards. In fact, at that point, if you just begin to listen to the language of the cards, they tell you everything you may need to know about anything that you happen to do. For example, right now, the deck is telling me that uh, you should pick a card, any one that you want, and then show it to everyone here. Make sure that everybody's in on it. I won't look. I've already seen this trick. <laughs> And return it to the deck there. Oh, it's very important that you remember it, or it's a very obscure effect at the end. Okay, now you, you may notice that it really doesn't matter where the card ends up inside of the deck because it's not going to be me that's responsible for what's taking place. In fact, it's the deck of cards themselves that's going to tell me everything that I need to know. For example, the top card here. This is the card that tells me a, a very important piece of information. This tells me the color of your card. It was a cherry colored card, wasn't it? Uh, black cherry. Yeah, it's, a, it's a black cherry. So that's the. Uh, now, this is the card that tells me another very important piece of information. This is the card that tells me the suit of your card. Was your card a club? Yes. Your card was a club. Very important piece of information there. This is the card that tells me where your card is. Now, if I count down, just three cards away should be your selection. That's one, two, three cards. For the first time, what was the name of your selection? Ten of clubs. The. <laughs> Oh, that's it, the Ten of Clubs. Uh, now, uh, and these cards down here, these are the cards that's telling me it's time to do a four-race trip. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Tell you what, I want to set those down there uh, for just a second, and I want to show you something uh, really kind of amazing here, because I'm going to place a card right here, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. This is a paradox card. I have to know it's not a picture of two doctors. It's a paradox because although I'm setting the card right there in your full vision all along, that card actually cannot be there. I'll explain what I mean. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, look at these cards closely. Examine them. Make sure they're what they seem to be. And uh, then I'd like you to examine this uh, pen here. Make sure that it's what it seems to be. And then examine yourself and make sure you're who you seem to be <laughs> because I want you to go through those cards and find one card. And I want you to write your name very large on the face of that card so that everybody knows that's the only card like that in the world. Uh, you know, you might want to pick a small spot card so that your name shows up better. And it won't matter if I see what the card is because it's not that kind of a trick. So any one that you want, sign your name on the face of it. This side? That, on the face, that's good. Very good. And I'll take the, the marker back. We'll get rid of that, just like, and let's see what card you got there. The Two of Hearts, very, very good. And I'm going to place your signed card right there. I'm going to put this out of play. Now, the aces are going to do something quite amazing. If I take these four aces and I add them to your signed card, just like this, watch what happens. Nothing uh, right away happens. It's still your signed card. But uh, the aces do have a magical sort of property and a magical sort of effect on your card. See, if I take it and I give it just a little wave like this, it now changes into the ace. In fact, all we have here are aces. One, two, three, four aces. Your signed card has completely disappeared. Now, you may recall that the paradox... Oh, wait. I, I'm not going to touch that card. I said that I wouldn't touch it, so i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use these as little cardboard forceps to deliver something because I said it was a paradox card. The reason it's a paradox it's because although it was there all along, it has always been your signed oh. card. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You know, uh, there are some techniques in magic that are so amazing that even the magician isn't quite sure what's happening or how it takes place. I'll show you what I mean. It doesn't matter which one of these we use. Why don't you just pull one of those out and we'll use whichever one you want. That one there, it doesn't matter if I see it. Uh, it's the four of clubs. Very good. This is really just to kind of illustrate something that I'm still trying to, to figure out myself. See, if I place that card about halfway down into the deck, you can see it's not on the bottom or the top. But if I give the cards a little move just like this, it comes back to the top. Now, you may not have known what to look for, so I'll do it again. And here's what I don't understand. Without question, it goes into the center of the deck. 
I just riffle the cards like this and still your card comes back to the top. Now here's what I've decided to do. In order to kind of trace this technique back to its lair, I figured out a way of eliminating everything down to its bare minimums so that we can stand a chance of figuring out exactly what's happening in this uh, particular effect. So here's what I want to do. I'm just going to take out a few very easy to follow cards. Uh, in this particular case, it'll just be the ace, two, three, four, five of spades, and we'll see if we can't figure out exactly what's taking place in that particular technique, okay? Should be nice and simple. All you have to do is watch a small number of cards. Let's see, I'll tell you what, let's start with the, uh, the ace of spades first to see if we can figure out what happens. I'll take the ace, I'll place it about halfway down the end of the packet, no question what's taking place, and I'll push it in, I give it a little magical move like this, and yet that card comes back to the top, same way. Are you any closer to figuring it out now that we've eliminated it? Yeah, I'm not either. So I tell you what, let's get rid of that one and see if we can't make it even easier to follow. I'll use just the two of spades. We'll place it about halfway down into the packet. No question what's taking place. No funny stuff. There you go. Give it a little magical move just like this, and the two of spades comes back to the top. I'm not any closer to figuring it out myself, so, well, I'll tell you what, let's try it one more time with the two before we start eliminating it. No question what's taking place. Two of spades down into the packet, give it a little magical move like this, and the two of spades comes back to the top. I'm not any closer to figuring it out, so I'm going to get rid of one more. Let's see if we can use it. You know what's interesting? You ever heard of the quantum particles? These little particles that they've discovered actually behave different when they know they're being watched. And I see with the three, four, and five of spades, it's so clear. We only have a top, bottom, and middle. They'll know that we're watching. And when they know that we're, we're watching, they behave differently. In this case, the three of spades turns face down. I'll do it again. You place it inside. You give it a little magical move, and again, it turns face up because it knows that we're watching. But I want to get rid of one more card. This time, there should be no problem. All we've got are the four and the five. It'll be a piece of cake to find what's taking place here. If I put the four down on the bottom, just like this, still, it comes back to the top. Now, we're still not any closer to figuring it out, so I thought, surely, with only one card, I don't even have a bottom or a middle. Surely I'll see it come back to the top. The funny thing is, the joke's on me. It's already back on top, and I still don't know how it happened. <laughs>